Hi, welcome to Infinity and Beyond, a video series where we'll be covering actual rocket science, brought to you by Astronomy Magazine. Each episode, we'll take a brief dive into a different cosmic topic, covering it from the basics to the latest research. My name is Abigail Bullenbach, and today I'll be talking about some of the brightest and most distant known celestial objects, quasars. First discovered more than half a century ago, quasars are distant, star-like objects that outshine entire galaxies. For years, astronomers had no idea what great energy source could fuel these distant candles. We now know that these objects are powered by black holes, a billion times as massive as our sun, shining so brightly they eclipse the ancient galaxies that contain them. In the 1930s, Carl Jansky, a physicist at Bell Laboratories, discovered that the static interference on transatlantic phone lines came from the center of the Milky Way. Later in the 1950s, astronomers used radio telescopes to probe the heavens, pairing the signals they received with visible objects. One such object was 3C273, whose optical counterpart isn't a normal looking galaxy, but a bright star embedded in a fuzzy halo. 3C273 and other sources like it were called quasi-stellar radio sources, or quasars, because the signals came from a source that looked like, but wasn't, a single star. It wasn't until 1963 that astronomer Martin Schmidt determined the distance to 3C273, a whopping 2.5 billion light years. That meant it must be extremely bright, some 100 times brighter than a normal galaxy at that distance. Numerous theories were put forth, from massive bursts of star formation to multiple supernova going off. But in 1969, Donald Lyndon Bell showed that matter falling into a supermassive black hole billions of times the mass of our sun could explain the energy we see coming from quasars. Scientists now know that the tiny point-like glimmers of quasars are indeed signals from matter around supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies. Although light cannot escape from the black hole itself, it can come from the accretion disk of infalling gas and dust before it disappears in the black hole forever. This gas and dust swirls together, heated by friction, until it becomes so hot and bright that we see it as a quasar. And this accretion disk is so bright that it outshines the entire host galaxy around it. Most quasars have been found billions of light years away. Because it takes light time to travel, studying objects in space functions much like a time machine. We see the object as it was when the light left it billions of years ago. Thus, the further away scientists look, the farther back in time they can see. Astronomers now know of hundreds of thousands of quasars. The majority of quasars exist during the early life of their host galaxy. That means older galaxies like the Milky Way may once have hosted a quasar that has long been silent. The most luminous and energetic quasars shine anywhere from 10 to a thousand times brighter than the entire Milky Way. Quasars are the brightest objects in a larger class of objects known as active galactic nuclei or AGNs. Although astronomers used to think different types of AGNs were powered by different objects, today they believe all AGNs are the same object, just seen from different perspectives or at different stages in their lives. The most distant known quasar is more than 13 billion light years from Earth. That means this quasar is shining at a time when the universe was only 670 million years old. Quasars this young, and the galaxies they live in can reveal information about how the first stars and galaxies evolved. That's because it appears that larger galaxies are the hosts of larger black holes. 
So astronomers now believe there must be some mechanism that links a galaxy's formation to its black hole and vice versa. This link has profound implications for galaxy formation and evolution theories and is an ongoing area of research in astronomy. One big question that remains is how the supermassive black holes that power quasars form in the first place. Astronomers still don't know how these behemoths are born. As bigger and better telescopes probe the cosmos, maybe we'll soon know the answer. But one thing is for sure, and that is we must continue marching onwards because the universe sure won't slow down for us to catch up. Remember, there is no limit when you're watching Infinity and Beyond.